Hello everyone, today we are here for a session on Marketing Automation Best Practices for 2021. I'm Carol, I'm an International Manager at Web Mechanic, um, and we are proud to be Motec Community Partners and we have been collaborating with the community for a few years now. So it's great to be here. Um, in the next uh, 30 minutes, uh, we are going to see a little recap on marketing automation basics. So we all have the same level of information. We are going to talk about some updated figures on inbound marketing, because as you may know, they go together. And finally, we are going to tackle the best practices that you can adopt this year. So we will see together what are the different techniques in the associated tools that can be useful along the conversion funnel and the, the results that you can expect. Okay, so uh, just a little bit about Web Mechanic for those who don't know us yet. Um, we have been in the marketing automation market since uh, 2015. And we have been several times the first contributor to Malta community. So as you can imagine, it's a, it is a pleasure to be here at Multicon once again. Um, we are based in France, in the French Alps, but we host our data, uh, the data for, of our customers in different locations around the world, depending on, on where they are. So for that, we have servers in France, of course, in Switzerland, because they have their own data protection law, in the United States, Canada, and Australia. Today, we have customers in, in 11 different countries, and we are the sixth uh, marketing automation solution provider in France. So we are very proud of this. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move forward. Um, and recap the basics, right? So marketing automation is a part of an inbound marketing strategy and it's a set of techniques, uh, inbound marketing in that case, uh, techniques in which prospects arrive naturally to your website by providing them with useful services or content. So this set of techniques and tools will allow you to automate your communication on different channels and according to your target's buying cycle. Okay, so marketing automation is also four phases for one strategy, winning and keeping your customers. But for each step of the conversion funnel, uh, we implement marketing actions that will convert your prospects into committed customers, uh, potentially brand ambassadors. Uh, make your co contacts go progress faster in their conversion process by delivering the right message to the to the right person at the right time and using the right channel. That's uh, all that marketing automation is about, right? Uh, but now we are gonna take a closer look into the process uh, of these leads coming to our website. So. Uh, one of the goals of the marketing team, as you may probably know if you are marketers, uh, is to bring traffic to the website. Thanks to paid actions, to SEO, as well as community management on social networks. But at, until the purchase or the closing phase, the road, as you know, is still long. So only 1% of your visitors, as you can see in the, in the image, will actually enter your CRM. These are the hot leads. Uh, this percentage can vary, of course, depending on the quality of your traffic. But the thing is, what can you, how can you make the most of those 49% of visitors who do not convert in your website? Okay, so let's assume that one out of two visitors of your website arrived there by mistake. So these are the bounces. So this leaves us with half of the visitors minus the percentage of customer conversion. Uh, that means 49 more or less uh, that are interested. And these 49% will have to manage to convert them into customers. 
And that's where a marketing automation strategy will help us by creating the automated workflows for different actions in order to convert these contacts, we can cover each step of the sales funnel. Segmentation, nurturing, uh, the, the engaging part, the engagement part, and of course, the after-sale post-purchase action. So we have marketing automation in a break in the middle of the process, but marketing automation will also be present um, once the lead become a customer, uh, becomes a customer, because we will have uh, the other types of campaigns for like onboarding, thank you campaigns, billing, invoices, service, service training, uh, loyalty programs, special events. I mean, the possibility uh, the possibilities are endless. Okay, so that's uh, the kind of leads and the kind of uh, um, how the funnel is structured and where marketing automation will take place. Sometimes people think it's in the beginning, even before traffic acquisition, but no, if, if we don't have traffic, we can't do anything, right? All right, so are you convinced yet? Uh, because if not, let's take a back, talk about some numbers. All right, um, so... Some key figures, 92% uh, of companies that use inbound marketing see an increase of website traffic and lead generation, 89% of users expect brands to deliver, to deliver com content that is entertaining and provides them with solutions for their problems, and 81% of users trust the information uh, disclosed on professional blog posts. So, honor this trust and your and the credibility that they have okay all right so now let's uh, talk about the best practices related to marketing automation and, so, and sometimes more broadly uh, inbound marketing and we're gonna do this in accordance with each step of the conversion funnel so the first one uh, the first step is the uh, attraction uh, the acquisition phase so this is when you need to do everything you can to get your prospect's attention. Okay, so one thing uh, for that matter is uh, the buyer personas creation. So this is often a neglected step, um, but we need to look at it a little bit with a little bit more um, interest because it can be really useful uh, we, we're going to see why uh, in uh, two minutes. Uh, so a persona is a fictional representation of your, your ideal customer. So you will be able to define it after having conducted a market studied, study and analyzed the, the real data that you already have I mean, on your real customers. Uh, the definition of your personas is the crucial step to determine the profile of your audience and how your product or service will meet their expectations. So the ultimate goal here is to know your targets in detail. And when I say detail, I mean age, family, situation, needs, habits, obstacles, problems, desires, etc. And then segment them. This will help you to create the personalized content because the better you know someone, the easier it is to um, know how to address to them, to know how what to tell them. So that's how you will be able to create the engaging and interesting content for them to arrive into your website, right? In our website, in Web Mechanics website, uh, there's what we call a persona, a buyer persona kit that you can download uh, to learn how to create yours. There's a guide, a survey example, and a template uh, ready to be used. So uh, if it's free, of course. So if you want to uh, go and um, pass through this process of creating your personas, this can be of a huge help for, for you. All right, uh, so the next one is the account-based marketing. Uh, account-based marketing only works for uh, B2B, and especially if you are addressing to large accounts. So this it's a technique, and 
that it's a technique that will that will allow you to identify the companies that visit your website without telling you, even if they are anonymous. So this is a, this is a, an opportunity for your sales representatives to detect projects uh, with this, these accounts. The major challenge of account-based marketing is to identify those, these, the, these anonymous visitors of your website while respecting GDPR. Uh, so how does it work? Uh, thanks to the software, you can observe the behavior of your visitors and this is what ABM is ba based on. Uh, thanks to the tracking cookie installed on the, on the website and under the condition that the user accepts uh, cookies according to GDPR once again, uh, the software will be able to show you the companies that visit your website. It will make a link into between uh, the public database of your IP, uh, of the IP addresses of companies. There are public databases for that matter to associate the name of the company and to the visit of the anonymous user. Okay, so keep in mind that the IP address is considered a personal data according to GDPR and the software needs to automatically anonymize it or you'll not be able to exploit the data. Okay, uh, so what can we do uh, with this information? Uh, this information can be especially useful for your sales people, your sales team. Uh, they will be able to have a global vision, a vision of the company's activity and not only of one contact. So coupled with the other marketing tools, uh, marketing automation tools such as lead scoring, your sales team will be able to carry out targeted and personalized prospection actions. That's something to consider for acquisition. Okay, that's about the IP address. And uh, only uh, a quick word on LinkedIn magnets. In inbound marketing, the purpose of the game is to attract visitors through relevant content or useful services, as we saw. So these contents are also called uh, lead magnets. Applied to your website, this method allows you to capture your uh, lead and its information. That means uh, the lead magnet in exchange for the contact information. So it participates in the qualification and also the segmentation process. There are many forms of lead magnets. To attract the attention of your target, these high-valued added contents must, con must answer more or less precise problems. So as an example of lead magnets, you can have guides, white papers, videos, uh, webinar replays, quizzes, contests, simulators, uh, non-exhausted <laughs> list. Um, but sometimes it can be only a, a brochure or I mean something something simpler. It doesn't need to be a 50 page guide or something like this. Just something that you can exchange. And of course, it must be uh, of high added uh, value. Um, okay, so how can you choose the right uh, lead magnet? By having a good knowledge of your persona, so it's all connected. It is, being, it is by being aware of your prospect's needs that you'll be able to choose the content and the format that is the best. So the quality of the content uh, that you propose is important because it will allow you to gain the trust of, uh, of your prospect, of the prospect. So if they uh, download something, then, then they get disappointed. Of course, this will also play a role in your reputation um, right away. So be careful with that. Uh, how to set it up? Well, you can create a landing page on which we'll place the, the download form. And this page must be attractive and clear enough to make your prospect want to give his information in exchange for your lead magnet. Once this page is online, it's time for promotion, so social networks, referencing, ads, to make your resource known and attract new leads, of course. 
In the last step, um, measure the results because it's always important to measure uh, the performance of your actions. As silly as it is, sometimes we don't do that, that right. Uh, so that's how you'll be able to adjust your content strategy. Uh, Maltec will be able to give you information about your visitors and your different resources, resources. So you can highlight the ones that work and duplicate them get inspired by them and have more chances to please them, okay? As I mentioned earlier, the lead magnets also participate in the segmentation uh, process, which is the second step of the, of the conversion funnel. We'll have a look into that. Um, so during the qualification segmentation phase, you should do everything you, you can to learn as much as possible of, of, about your leads. So there are several practices and tools in Maltec to qualify your audience. One of them is progressive profiling. Let's take a look into that. So we were talking earlier about uh, forms on your landing pages to collect the information about your visitors. So progressive profiling is a feature that will allow you to improve the conversion rate of your forms and enrich the information collected on your contacts. So uh, one good piece of information uh, is that the completion rate of a form increases by 50% when switching from a form field form to a three field form. So it's a lot from removing just only one field. And asking for a phone number causes 37% of visitors to leave the submission. For me, that's not that surprising because I personally hate to leave my phone number. So I guess that's maybe your case as well. So what, what will progressive profiling do for us is that the, it will allow us to uh, reduce the number of fields in the, in the forms without compromising the information that we're going to collect on the prospects. So how does it work? By making your forms evolve um, automatically so that as your prospects visit your website and therefore fill out the form, you will have a complete list of information without your visitor having to fill out forms with 10 entries. So each time they return, we know him a little bit better and other fields will appear uh, new fields because we already had the previous one so they don't need to appear again and so we're going to collect some new data. In this example we can see that during his first visit the contact will have to fill in the first name, the last name, email information but dur during the second visit the email will always be requested because in marketing automation it's the unique identifier of the contact but the other fields will evolve for you to get some new information. And all this throughout uh, the lead's visit. So a little observation, just a little observation here, because not all is perfect. This works on all forms uh, during the visitor session. That means that as long as, as, as he hasn't cleared his cookies, otherwise we can't know. All right, so. And then we have uh, CRM synchronization because this is another important practice because it is essential, especially in B2B, to work hand in hand with your sales team as well. So uh, marketing automation will provide a personalized experience throughout the buying process. Uh, this is the marketing automation part of the job and the link a link in Maltec to your CRM will standardize the data that you have on your prospects and customers to send the right message at the right time. So if you have a CRM uh, that is already synchronized um, with Maltec, you can have the simple the field, the custom field client equals yes or no. And once the salespeople uh, uh, update the contact file and the and the entries customer equals yes, the information gets back to Maltec and from this we can start for example an onboarding campaign to welcome the new customers that 
were on customer equals empty or no. In, and now they have customer equals yes. Just one uh, basic uh, example uh, of simple things, simple but, um, but useful things that you can do with these kinds of uh, synchronization. Okay, so next step, the third phase is um, of the conversion funnel is nurturing. So it is during that phase that you must turn new prospects into customers. So to achieve this goal, you need to stimulate them into the buying process and increase their interest and knowledge uh, in and about your company. So the advantage of nurturing EB2B is that it saves your sales team time by only sending them the hot leads ready to engage. And if you are in B2C, this will allow you to generate more customers uh, from the same number of visitors. That means a better conver conversion rate. So during this phase, the goal is to send the right content to the right person at the right time. Luckily, you have done a great job in the first uh, two phases and you have a lot of information about your contact contacts now. So the first thing to do is to personalize your uh, content. So what will this is what will make uh, the difference during the monitoring phase is personalization. Um, and thanks to marketing automation, you can do uh, this personalization to both leads and customers. Depending um, on what you're doing, on what you're using, if you have a CRM that is synchronized or not, or an e-commerce that is already synchronized or not, you will have more or less choice regarding the personalization tools, which is just obvious. Okay. Um, regarding the custom fields. So these correspond to the information on, on your contexts, last name, first name, uh, birthday, or you know, of the, their company, sector of activity, number of employees, customer status. Um, these are the data that you collected in the previous, previous steps or that are pushed from the CRM or the e-commerce integration and so on. So when you create a campaign, you insert the information about your customer, you play with the custom fields to show uh, what you know uh, of him, to show that you know him actually. So the use of the first name and last name is now this is standard uh, in the communications. But be careful with the accuracy of information. Uh, but why not to use to go further and use the location fields, their birthday, or even the information about the last, uh, their last purchase. Be careful not to do too much, otherwise you may risk uh, seeming intrusive, a little bit intrusive. And don't forget that you can also use the custom fields uh, tokens in subject lines as well. There is a study uh, that says that emails displaying in a personalized uh, subject line generate a 50% higher opening rate. So it's good to consider using the tokens in subject lines as well. And then there are the communication channels. So Today, the multiplication of communication channels allow you to push your message to the best possible place, uh, through the best possible place for your contacts. Uh, and today, 50%, uh, maybe more, of internet activity takes place on mobile. So we need to take that into consideration. Emails, SMS, notifications, social networks. It is possible for you and your contacts to choose their preferred channel to be contacted. Taking into account your contact choice will allow you to give them a personalized buy buying loyalty experience. And as a bonus, you show them that you respect the GPR. Uh, dynamic content, for that matter, is another important element to personalize your communications. Uh, but we'll come into that uh, in more detail in the retention part. Okay, so next we have A-B testing. That is a technique that can be used throughout your conversion funnel. Uh, and it will allow you to improve normally your email opening, open rates, your landing page conversion rates, or your CTA uh, click rate. What A-B testing does is to shoot or publish two versions of the same content uh, to similar audiences constituted in a random way to compare results. 
In concrete terms, it is a method that allows you to change a parameter, in particular on a landing page and an email, and a call to action maybe, to understand the elements that allow, uh, to allow you to have a better result. Uh, so, how to succeed in, um, with A-B testing? There are uh, four tips that you can follow. One is to test all the variations, but one by one. You can test many parameters, colors, layout, copy, font size, content. These are all factors that can increase um, your conversion, click-through and open rates. But the combinations are infin infinite and the more parameters you test, the more you optimize your content. On the other hand, you need to test the variables one by one to analyze them at the best. Otherwise, you won't know <laughs> what made the difference. Second is to test all the channels. A-B testing works on emails, landing pages, social networks or, or SMS, for example, I mean in general. As for variables, the more tests you do, the more you'll be able to increase your results. Third one, not all uh, stats are inter interpretable. Uh, not all tests provide um, and produce an understandable result. So first, make sure that all the parameters are identical, except for the variant you want to analyze. And then the audiences must be similar in large enough to interpret the, interpret the results. In the fourth one, uh, to draw conclusions from the results obtained. You know which variants to test, how to test them, and how to interpret the results of your A-B testing. So each result can have an impact on the decision-making process of your communication construction. Okay. Next one is lead scoring. How do you know if your leads are hot enough to be transferred to your salespeople, the famous transition from MQL to SQL. This is the role of a lead scoring strategy, maybe. And I mean, at least they can help you on this. So lead scoring is a scoring system that allows you to measure the level of qualification and maturity of each lead that you generate. So thanks to this scoring system in the threshold that you will have to define, you will be able to prioritize your potential customers and implement the appropriate marketing actions. So depending on the actions performed by your customers, you will assign more or less points to your contacts. For example, 20 points for downloading a white paper, 50 points for uh, submitting a contact form, and so on. Depending on the number of points assigned to each contact, contact you will know where uh, they are in their purchasing process. Uh, but the fun part is to set up the threshold for when they achieve a certain number of points and therefore a certain level of maturity. But how can you assign points to your prospects? The most common way is to analyze the data of your former prospects to determine your value system. So lead scoring is a more advanced part of a marketing automation strategy. So the best way to, to work is to do your marketing automation strategy without lead scoring and then having set up a base, you will be able to analyze, to observe uh, the behavior of the contacts who became your customers in the past and determine, determine the elements that they have in common identify the points of contact that were important and try to repeat the operation with the contacts who did not become customers yet. So this will help you to identify the elements that should be weighed in, in the lead scoring. The example that data that can be used, uh, that could be the demographic data, uh, the company information, the online behavior and email engagement for, for that matter. But how uh, do you know which data is the most important data? Discussing uh, with your sales team is essential because they know the needs of your target, they communicate directly with prospects and customers, they will be able to maybe um, provide you with some insights, useful insights for this as well. 
You can also interview customers to understand their decision process. And finally, test and learn should also be applied to lead scoring. See what work or what do not work. The more you know your target audience, the more relevant your lead scoring strategy will be. With these nurturing tools in place, there's no doubt that you will sell, you will turn your prospects into new customer. Uh, so let's go to the last phase of the conversion funnel. Uh, that means retention. Uh, right. This loyalty and re-engagement stage is often overseen, even though it is potentially the one that can bring you the best ROI the fastest. A Salesforce, a Salesforce study uh, also tells us that you have 20% of chance uh, of selling to a prospect versus 70% uh, of chance of selling to a customer. So let's see which tools can be used in marketing automation to create the customer retention. First one, uh, dynamic content, which is a feature that allows you to create variations in the blocks of your emails and your landing pages. It displays uh, different, it will appear, the information will be different for each contact in order to address them uh, personally. It is an ideal tool uh, to personalize your messages. You can make your emails, your landing pages, sometimes even your SMS, your forms, your pop-ins dynamic. So this is also a great tool to save you time because you don't need to create 20 versions of the same email. You just need you just use dynamic content to change a few blocks based on custom fields, and then we will have a personalized email for each of your customers of your contacts. Uh, so it is indeed an important way to personalize and improve customer experience. That leads us to the customer experience part, because as you know, um, we need to listen uh, carefully to, to our customers. 80% uh, of buyers are willing to pay more for a good customer experience. What, but we need to know what impact can a good customer experience have on our customers and what kind of results we can obtain if we manage to achieve this. So there is the upselling part. Uh, so you will improve the average basket for your sales. So they will buy, they will just simply buy more and increase in your average sales card. This is one of the uh, direct benefits from a good customer experience, but also increase additional sales or cross-selling. Cross-selling is also important uh, an important lever to develop or to develop your turnover. So when a customer adds a product to his cart, it is strongly recommended to suggest complementary items that might interest them. And cross-selling uh, increases sales by about three three percent in total. And for the the third one is customer retention, uh, the loyalty. Uh, because with the implementation of marketing automation, you gather a lot of information to interact with your customer at the right time. A few days after his last visit or on his birthday or when he adds an item to his cart without finalizing the sale or when he consults the pricing page of our website. All these events are great opportunities to trigger automated actions at the right time and on the communication channel most adapted to your persona. All this can help you to create a privileged uh, relationship with your customer. But how can you improve your customer experience with marketing automation? Uh, I mean, in terms of um, workflow ideas, we uh, already have seen uh, many features that will that allow you to personalize your communications but a very good way to provide a great experience to your customers is to set up dedicated workflows that is what remains the at the heart of the marketing automation strategy so one idea of the first one would be an onboarding uh, scenario which is simple but really effective so start by welcoming them to your world uh, with a customer onboarding scenario. 
explain how you work and emphasize the benefits that you will have as a customer of your company. It's always nice to be reassured that the choice we made was the right one, right? So it is also the opportunity to, to explain how things work, if you have training, if you have a setup to be made. This really uh, informative scenario can also be helpful for, for, the new, for the new customers. And there's also the brand ambassadors, uh, the workflow for them. And first of all, you need to identify the different members of your brand community and give them uh, the personalized experience. But first of all, you need to know who they are. The goal here is to be go further, actually, um, than the simple uh, customer experience, but to uh, offer an exclusive product or an innovative feature via a particularly striking communication. So they will be treated differently, maybe invited to special events, uh, receive special discounts and so on. This is the idea of the uh, brand ambassadors. And also a customer support scenario, the customer support workflow, because we need uh, to think about how you will respond to problems you, your customers may encounter while using your product or service. So first, first step, listen to them via your website, your social networks, and even on networks outside, outside your company. Your customers express themselves and give you their opinions, they're there. So then you need to click quickly identify them and bring them a precise and personalized response. By making your support, your marketing, or your sales departments communicate, and thanks to the segmentation that you have carried out beforehand, you will gain in efficiency, and above all, you will remain consistent in the way you communicate, whatever the point of contact, whatever the purchase uh, cycle. Okay, uh, so we saw uh, different features and uh, resources and ways and uh, for each step of the conversion funnel. I hope that gave you some ideas for your strategy. Um, and uh, I invite you to be in touch, uh, to visit our website, uh, download the lead magnets and uh, the resources that we, uh, the high value, <laughs> uh, high value resources that we put in place there. And uh, feel free to reach out, to, to chat, to exchange some ideas. Um, and uh, if you have uh, any questions, I'd be glad to take them now. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your section. And um, I really enjoyed uh, you talking about the best practices for marketing automation too. And uh, we have like some questions from the audience and some questions uh, for you to answer. So I'm just going to, uh, I wrote them in a slide so that it will be easier for you to see them. So I'm just going to share it uh, so that you'll be able to see it clearly. Uh, so. so number one question we have here is, do you require contacts to sign up before you can market? Uh, to them by email, or uh, so would you be unable to market to the full 50%? This is like the first question we do have here. Yeah, actually, you're right. We still need to ask the, the contacts uh, uh, consent to be able to communicate with them, not only their email address, but, the, but it's contact, consent as well. So that would give us less than 50% to actually communicate with. But the important thing here is to give them their, this option instead of just leaving them uh, leave our websites, considering that we already have already made the effort to, to attract him, him, him to the website. So we, we offer him the opportunity to continue the experience uh, with us uh, by filling a form and giving, them, uh, giving us uh, his opt-in to continue the, the journey. All right, so uh, next question we do have here is, um, do you think it's necessary to count with a digital agency? 
to implement a marketing automation strategy? Well, I guess that depends. Uh, that depends on your resources in terms of uh, team, in terms of uh, knowledge as well. So sometimes this is not, uh, you don't want to, to, to really focus your, your strategy on marketing automation, but you rather uh, ask uh, the agency to take care of it. And I would specifically advise you to at least count with an agency if you don't have the resources to create the content that is necessary for your inbound, uh, inbound strategy. If you can do everything on house as well, or just count it with the with an agency to do the setup and the implementation, if you wish. Uh, but it, I guess that really depends on the on your team and if you want your your team to be trained, and uh, if you want to keep to pilot everything uh, with your team or not. Great. Uh, our next question here. Uh, what is your favorite tool from the ones you mentioned? Um, I guess for me, uh, from the ones I mentioned, I guess it's right now it's dynamic content. I'm a big fan of this uh, feature because it really can save us time. I mean, in the day to day life of a marketer, to not uh, need to create a thousand variations of the same email and just changing a few blocks uh, suit uh, our contacts and our customers very well, uh, knowing that we show uh, that we know them uh, and we can provide some uh, some ex exclusive experience based on these fields. Because I already saw uh, some cool uh, some cool ideas using dynamic content from our customers. Customers that use uh, the personas uh, as the custom fields. So if they have a persona A, persona B, persona C, and this is a custom field in their database, there's a dynamic content, a promo code that will appear considering the type of persona that we identified. So this is a pretty cool use of this feature. And I guess the, the, the possibilities are endless. You can use this on e-commerce for the promo codes and uh, and so on. You can adjust uh, considering the lead scoring that you can put in place. So I guess that for me uh, right now it's the it's a it's a good one. This, this dynamic content. Great, great. Uh, I think for the last question we have here is uh, when creating a marketing email form or landing page, is there any particular feature? So we can use to make it mobile friendly? Well, I guess there are a few on the market. I know uh, that for emails, there are uh, third party services as Tripo that can help you on this. I don't know any for, for forms for that matter without uh, going through coding or anything like this. I know that for Web Mechanic, we have the email builder that provides you with a mobile view as well. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. I can help you more than this on these uh, third-party services to 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 make it more bio-friendly. Uh, but this is the ones I know and that I can remember now. Great. Uh, I think that are the questions we do have. Anyway, thank you for your section. I did really learn a lot, and uh, I'm sure every other person that joined in this section also learned a lot, one or two tips on how to automate marketing automation and best practices to use. So, yeah. Thank you, and uh, see ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, all.